Okay, so I think we'll go ahead and uh, get started here. So first I wanted to thank everyone for joining us today with our six community health uh, monthly webinar. Um, today we'll be, we'll be having uh, Warren Gallego present on healthy beverages. But uh, first, my name is Eugene Gallego. For those of you who do not know, um, I've been with uh, Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Health Board for a little over a year as the program coordinator for uh, Good Health and Wellness. But uh, for our presenter, Warren, Warren Gallego is an enrolled member of the Ogallala Sioux Tribe. He was born and raised in Pine Ridge, Pine Ridge Indian Reservation prior to his work at Great Plains. He worked for United Tribes Technical College as a health promotion specialist. Warren received his bachelor's degree in indigenous liberal studies from the Institute of American Indian Arts and is currently pursuing, actually he did receive his master's degree in uh, tribal administration and governance for the University of Minnesota Duluth. He's been with the health board since November and uh, Hopefully he'll be on a lot, a lot longer. So we'll go ahead and um, turn this over to Warren. And uh, Warren, if whenever you want to begin. Thank you, Eugene. Um, and, um, yeah, today I don't know if I should share my screen now. Well, before I get started. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, healthy beverages, um, a community action guide plan for, um, for you know, making policy changes in communities, uh, in native communities. Can everyone see my screen? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can see it. Yep, you can see, see the screen, Warren. Yes, looks great. Okay. Um, this uh, healthy beverage uh, community action guide outlines a process for Indian communities um, to uh, promote healthy beverages and decrease consumptions of um, sugar sweetened um, beverages and caffeinated energy drinks. Uh, the guide planning process uh, is flexible so that you include action, um, action specific to your own community. Uh, facts about you know, beverages and health. Um, Burdens will help you become a healthy um, beverage expert in your own community. Um, you know, and as uh, Native uh, people, we're always looking forward to uh, creating a healthy uh, future for our children, and and uh, this is one way that um, that's capable or possible of doing. Um, so let me get started here. Uh, further further note: um, the community action guide was developed by the Indian Health Service. Um, um, healthy healthy beverages action team um, it was created to help promote um, well basically the same thing to increase consumption of healthy beverages and decrease the consumption of unhealthy beverages uh, and um, let me see here go to the next slide there you go like I said, uh, the Healthy Beverage Community Action Guide outlines a process for um, community-owned actions for healthy beverages and decrease the consumption of sh sugar-sweetened uh, drinks. Um, you know, when people talk about, um, you know, health, we kind of forget about uh, one of the most important things that we um, take into our, our, our system, which is our uh, drinks. And we don't realize the importance that um, you know, drinking healthy um, beverages has on, on our health and how uh, sugar sweetened uh, beverages are are uh, basically devastating to the health of uh, our bodies. So this is a, a very important topic that needs to be discussed and I don't think it is being discussed too much in, in communities, not just Indian communities, but in the, uh, you know, nationally, internationally, you know, it's kind of glossed over when talking about um, uh, improving health among uh, among people. So, uh, why is choosing a healthy beverage important? Um, like I said, um, 
you know, epidemics of obesity contributes to uh, the negative health effects in Native communities. Uh, Native people are disproportionately uh, have higher rates of diabetes, of obesity, and it has a very uh, devastating impact on on everyone, in, you know, including children, elders, everyone in between. Uh, and um, as it states here, you know, uh, obesity and diabetes is a, a double epidemic that's uh, um, linked with liquid sugar, basically, that when we put into our, our bodies, it's, uh, a lot of these drinks are just loaded with sugar. And um, a lot of, uh, you know, steps can be taken to prevent uh, this uh, intake. And I'm just going to cover a few of them for you today. Um, let me see here. Uh, this, um, as it states here, you know, our brain, not only our brains, but our bodies are made up of water, lots of water. Uh, and so it's very important to, to um, you know, have water in our systems and to, uh, you know, replace the sugar, sugar laden drinks with more healthier uh, options. And water is most likely, you know, the, the most, the, Best thing that we can have in our systems and as it states you know our muscles consist of 75 percent water our brains 90 percent water blood you know it's 83 percent water so in order to, for our bodies to function properly uh, healthy um, we need to uh, fuel ourselves with lots and lots of water um, you know water is needed for good health um, it's um, proven that um, you know, well, well nourished and hydrated children have higher test scores, better school attendance, and fewer behavioral problems. Um, another healthy drink is uh, milk, um, which contains lots of calcium, vitamin, and proteins. Um, but, uh, sadly, you know, soda, the pop, has uh, replaced milk in the diets of many children, which contributes to you know childhood obesity, uh, childhood diabetes, even, and um, you know. That's not what we want for our kids. And you know, it says, which one of these drinks causes uh, tooth decay, um, weight gain? Uh, canned soda, energy drinks, sports drinks, power drinks, juice drinks. And um, all of them contribute to the epidemic of uh, diabetes, obesity among uh, our people. Um, I don't know if you could really, it's kind of small in the print there. It's hard to read, but. I'll be sending out a, a link to the PowerPoint after, or the Prezi after the thing, and you can read it a little better. The small print. Um, and it's just a little diagram of, you know, how just eight ounces of, you know, orange juice, how that contributes to calorie, cal caloric intake throughout the day, not just orange juice, um, coffee that's, uh, filled with sugars. Uh, so, so like, as these, as our day progresses, you know, we slowly build up uh, our sugar, our, our calories without really realizing it. And, you know, it, one of the things, uh, I don't know if any of you have seen um, the documentary, um, the one with McDonald's, what's that called? Supersize Me. Um, he, this guy, you know, I'm, some of you have, but those of you who haven't watched it, uh, the, the, the man on there, he went on a basically a McDonald's uh, diet for a month to see the, the health of, the health effects that it would have on him. And um, what it, he kind of failed to note in, in his results. Obviously, he had uh, lots of weight gain, um, very many other negative side effects that happened to him. But what he forgot to note in, in the results is that the amount of uh, soda that he drank and it, with every meal and orange juice and that con contributed to his weight gain and and uh, even his uh, emotional and uh, uh, side effects that he that he encountered uh, so like you know as it says are you drinking yourself fat a lot of us think oh well I gotta stay away from um, health unhealthy foods you know the burgers the pizza the fries when we forget you know that 
it's just as important to stay away from the pop, the fruit drinks, the, the sweet teas, the, the alcohol, the, you know, the orange juice. Um, as a matter of fact, one cup of orange juice has the same amount of sugar as four, um, four donuts does. So kind of give you an idea of how much sugar is within, within these drinks. You know, even more reasons to stay away from, um, from these uh, unhealthy beverages. Like I said, diabetes, obesity, weight gain, nutrient deficiency, tooth decay, among the few things that, uh, few reasons why we should stay away from them. You know, tooth decay, you know, it's, for children, it's very tough to see uh, kids who, because of their soda consumption, you know, their teeth are, are deteriorating and it's hard for them to, to eat healthy foods in which, so it's easier for, you know, they get somewhat more unhealthy and which contributes to that childhood obesity. Um, like, you know, the numbers there are very alarming for uh, tooth decay among native children, you know, 91% between the ages of 15 and 19 suffer from tooth decay from years of um, soda and, you know, sugar filled drinks. Um, kind of instead of just talking about you know um, the stuff that causes it, we also want to want to note the different things we that we can replace with uh, unhealthy drinks, which would be you know low fat or one percent fat free milk. Uh, obviously, water would be the best thing. Uh, one hundred percent real juice, um, real fruit juice, soy milk, al almond milk, unsweetened tea. Basically, a lot of these uh, healthy beverages are are uh, devoid of of sugar, and that's the one thing we, when talking about healthy beverages is we want uh, less sugar in our systems, basically. Uh, and Warren, yes, this is Nifa Zeph here from Fort Thompson, uh, and I just um, was wondering about the 100% real juice. I thought that had a lot of sugar in it, also. Well, I'm talking about like um. I know there's there's the store stuff, but like uh -huh. like the naturally, um, like the sweet juice you would even have at home, which is it has sugar in it also, but it's uh it also has like other nutrients in it that is um uh, would is better for us than just the you know the store bought juice. Right. Okay. Just a healthier alternative. And here's the, you know, some pictures. Um, like I said, uh, there's other alternatives with the, with the water. You could sub, uh, substitute it with the, uh, you know, the, the lemon, the different um, berries that you might enjoy, the, the, even the teas. Um, you, could, you could basically have any kind of uh, fruit drink you want without the, the added processed sugar, but, you know, with natural natural ingredients in there, um, the water being the main, main one in there. And like you said, on healthy beverages, regular soda, diet soda, uh, sweet iced tea, other sweetened drinks, food drinks. Um, if I, any of you, I talked about this earlier today with my, some of my coworkers, if you just get like, uh, make yourself a cup of, of uh, tea, unsweetened tea, and you get uh, a few sugar packets, say two of them, and and you put those in your drink, stir it up, and you, if you're not used to it, you know you could barely taste, you know, the sweetness of the of the tea. Whereas if you go to say a McDonald's or any other uh, uh, convenience store, well, you'll buy an iced tea, and you'll notice the the stark difference of of the, how this of the sweetness of that tea, and um, and just you know imagine how, the amount of tea that would have to go in, uh, the amount of sugar that goes into the tea. To make it uh, sweet and you know better tasting, I guess for a lot of people, but also unhealthier for everyone. Um, and here's the list. You know, the Gatorades. Uh, they have tons of sugar in them. Uh, energy drinks are filled with uh, sugar and uh, caffeine. That, and uh, a lot of times we'll get uh, we'll get 
it's kind of tricked with these uh, health, these new health drinks that are coming out. And you'll see them filled with, you know, kind of highlighted like, oh, this is, has this much, you know, fruits or nutrients, protein, whatever it might be. But, but if you look at the labels, they're filled with sugar also. So kind of, you know, label reading is a, a good thing to be, uh, be aware of. And to learn that is very uh, important and to deter ourselves from drinking unhealthy drinks, uh, un unaware of what's actually in there. You know, a lot of times, you know, we have the Sunny D Nesquik wine punch and a lot of, we'll, we'll give our children too, you know, the bug juice, you know, and I'm, I know children like, like all of us, we like, you know, sugar tastes good to us, you know, but it's also, you know, it's also not good for us. And here's a, another diagram of, um, of the actual numbers for, for drinks, uh, with Sprite, Pepsi, obviously, you know, the sodas are filled with sugar, but like when I talked about the juices earlier too, grape juice, pineapple juice, these are the store-bought ones. Um, they're filled with just as much, if not more, sugars than the, the, the pops and, and the Gatorade also. Okay, I'll give you a second to look at that. Gonna take it in. Um, you know, we, we see, you know, grape, pineapple, cranberry, apple, orange, grapefruit, and like, oh, that's, these are all fruits that are, that are good for us, but, and these uh, juice drinks, they're, you know, they add sugar in it to, to, to kind of, you know, uh, quench our, our sweet tooth, basically. So let's start talking about that uh, community action, like action kit. Um, like I said, it's to promote healthy beverages and you know decrease intake of sugary beverages. Uh, um, we kind of kind of focuses on on um, getting the the policy. Not understand. Uh, it's kind of a uh, uh, focuses on prevention in uh, schools and in um, organizations that uh, have uh, you know say pop machines or different venues in, in the, within their um, their buildings, within their locations to kind of switch them out and to put in healthier foods, put in water stations for for workers, for students, you know, for anyone who, who has access to that. So like I said, uh, you know, the toolkit will help you take action to increase access to healthy beverages, uh, develop an action plan for you and other action team members. And, um, you know, action team members, basically it's a group of people who come together to, to kind of start the, the process in implementing the policy change. Um, you know, basically a coalition of people to push this onto, not push, but to, uh, promote it and to, you know, give uh, the communities uh, uh, opportunity to hear uh, information that needs to be heard by them. Um, Cause a lot of times uh, we don't, community members don't have access to this information. So, you know, this coalition of, you know, our action team members is able to go out to the communities and to um, put those ideas out to the communities and allow them to make decisions for themselves. Uh, but we, Ultimate goal is to get that policy change within uh, the whatever it might be the school system, the the working environment, the work environment. Um, um, and another thing is to, like I said, identify, recruit, and work with team members who are actively involved, who want change, who see the need for for uh, for change, and and. Um, also to find resources to improve beverages. It's not a, it's not an easy thing to do by yourself, basically. You know, a group of people is a lot, makes things a lot more efficient for things to get done. So here's, you know, several steps you can take to become a beverage expert in your community. Uh, familiarize yourself with the community, what needs to be done, uh, where the machines may be, where where soda is sold, you know, there might be a cafeteria, there might be 
uh, uh, different venues where, where uh, unhealthy drinks are sold. Um, learn about your healthy beverages. Uh, that way you're able to, to make the, the change from, you know, from unhealthy beverages. So, you know, like uh, water, um, unsweetened drinks are the way to go. <laughs> um, another thing is to, like I said earlier, um, find out where unhealthy drinks are being sold. Um, a lot of times it's, you know, um, soda machines. And, and I think the first step for policy change and possibly the easiest, it would just be to get rid of them altogether, the, the soda machines. So. Um, research and seek other policies that may affect the development of healthy beverages. Uh, that being, you know, um, like I said, maybe there's a cafeteria that only serves, uh, say, orange juice, chocolate milk, instead of something a little better for, for the children, for, for workers. Um, finances that in, are involved in removing these things are, you know, some that needs to be done. Um, learning about what steps need to be taken to, in that regard. Um, the last thing there, it says, you know, to coordinate a poll, find out what the community wants. Maybe, maybe they don't want um, their pop taken away from them. You know, that's, that's up to them. Um, it's not up to us to tell them what they need to do. Um, we can only suggest and if that's the route they want to take then 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 that's a good thing too um, but you know doing a poll a survey of of what they think should be done is uh, vital to you know to the change um, like i said you need to decide which uh, areas um, need to be uh, identified uh, that could be, you know, which pop machine gets to use the most, which, and like I said earlier, there's going to be some people might not want, want the change and, and that's, that's fine too. Uh, but, um, what we want to do is to be able to provide, provide them with information to make that, that choice. And hopefully they'll be able to make the, the healthier choice uh, and even, you know, the right choice and getting rid of a lot of these unhealthy, uh, stations um, um you know time frames are important you know having plans is good having ideas of what to do is good but if we don't have a, a time frame for what we want to have done you know it's things can get um, pushed off to the side or kind of forgotten about but to have that in place it really puts you know organizes everything and and uh, you know gives people goals to to, to reach um, you know, and there's a, like I said, a, a needs assessment that can be done, which could be done alongside with, you know, the surveys, the, the polls, um, team members, you could assign the different, uh, different, um, responsibilities to them to accomplish these, these goals. Um, you know, team leader, obviously everyone, you know, needs a team leader to get things going. Um, but that's not all, always the case sometimes, you know, uh, coordinated effort is also very helpful, but you know, team leaders are obviously um, kind of the, the uh, route that many people take and that's, a, you know, that's the case and, and that's, that's a good thing too. Uh, you know, different things you can get done. Um, that you know, team leaders can do that. Teams can do focus groups. Find out what what people want. Uh, you know, obviously, research of of uh, the causes and effects of drinking soda has on our health. Uh, developing um, goals and priorities um, within within that will help uh, identify problems in communities. Uh, developing counter marketing techniques. Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, tobacco uh, prevention has done a good job at uh, counter marketing. You'll see a lot of the commercials on on uh, tobacco, on smoking, chewing tobacco that kind of puts uh, puts it in a bad light. You know, and sadly, that's not the case for uh, soda or unhealthy beverages. We ha I don't think I've ever seen a commercial on the negative health effects of drinking 
uh, pop has some people, uh, but that's you know, something that a team can can do, that team should do to help uh, the communities kind of see, well, this thing needs to get done, then uh, it's not good for our, ourselves, not good for our children to be drinking these things. Uh, um, and, you know, I, step five, you know, I'll, establishing initiatives to identify alternative funding is important. Um, it's not uh, easy to get done. A lot of times funds are, are low on, on it's kind of like side projects that people see that will see this as, and it's uh, very important to have uh, funding to get it done. Um, and last thing, you know, monitor and evaluate the, the, the process is this is important too. Um, you know, review your progress and re recognize your successes. Uh, you know, this is along with the uh, the team members. You know, trying to find out which uh, challenges there are, try to, to ways to overcome them. Um, um, you know, what are some of the changes that were done that helped create a challenge that created a challenge? Uh, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in the process of things that we we don't realize the the successes that we've we've done along the way, and it's important to kind of you know look back and you know see that we whatever little thing step that we did take for uh, improvement is is a good thing for communities and. and you know, the assessments, you know, are important. They help you evaluate uh, to which, you know, our community implements the kind of procedures and guidelines uh, that, to improve the, uh, the environment within our native communities. Um, you know, assessments are important. You know, we, we do these things and we need to be able to um, look at the information that is gathered and to make the best possible decisions and moving forward in, in these decisions, uh, you know, these, uh, these projects that we've taken. This community action plan is no different. Um, I have a, I actually have a list or uh, some forms here that kind of hard to see. Get a little closer. Okay. These are just sample forms. Um, and I mean, they could still be used too. Um, just ways of going around and gathering information uh, around your, your area. Um, the number of vending machines, you kind of want to know what, uh, where, where their locations are. Um, and you know, just a list of, of uh, uh, things you can go about and checking off and to kind of give everyone an overview of what, what, um, what's out there in the community and helps everyone understand you know, where, where the community is in terms of unhealthy beverages. And, um, here's another just example of a sample form, uh, our assessment. Uh, this one would be for a school. Uh, as we said it, these are, I have these on, um, I could send them out with the, uh, after the presentation to make it easier for you to, if you choose to go this route and you know, promoting healthy beverages, you know, and getting policies changed, I could send these out at the attachment with the, with the link of the presentation after, after it's done. Um, there's a number of ways that information can be gathered and processed for people. Um, and here's a survey of, of what um, that can be done. Uh, like I said, sometimes, Communities might not want change, and, and that's fine, you know. Um, but here's just one way of collecting that data um, and presenting it to uh, whoever the powers may be, tribal council, uh, school board, you know. Yeah, um, you know, planning for a healthy beverage community, it starts, you know, you have to start planning early for if you want to get things done. Uh, you have to, like I said, identify the campaign leader, the team members. Uh, you know, brainstorming is very important. Developing a strategy, plan of action, time frame. All these things are vital to getting uh, uh, these policies changed uh, to implementing healthy, healthy drinks. Uh, you know, scheduling meetings. Um, 
that's just as you know a hard thing to do as a lot of us know uh, even in our own work sites you know uh, facilitating meetings would need to be done uh, getting um, team members who are uh, passionate about um, improving the health of uh, community members is vital you know? um, it's probably one of the toughest things to do is to keep people engaged and focused on on goals and to accomplish those goals is you know is a a, a job on it unto itself so you know and just basic uh steps in in uh, implementing uh, this uh, action plan and i kind of want to end it here with the uh the quote from dolores star you know um, which says water is the best medicine for everyone. The best thing for Indian country is to drink sensibly with healthy drinks. And, you know, it, uh, it's tough to tell people to just stay away from, from pop if our and juice drinks when they've been doing it all their lives. So even just um, having alternative drinks, alternative uh, um, drinks is, is very important for, to provide for, our, our, uh, for people and, you know, it's tough to say, oh, you got to go cold turkey off a, off a soda, you know, where, you know, as for anyone, it's, it's tough. It's ch change is, is uh, not easy. So with that, I'll leave it open for questions here. Okay, thank you, Warren. Uh, that was an awesome, interesting presentation. I think a lot of us don't realize that the majority of our sugar intake is uh, from beverages that we consume. Not only is it detrimental to like to the contribution to diabetes, but to obesity or tooth decay as well. So as mm -hmm. some of the things that you mentioned. So, yeah, I, I talked about a lot about sugar because you know that's the main culprit in this uh, epidemic. Um, and I talked about too how how difficult it is for people to change their um, their drinking habits you know and i um there's a there was a study done on there was a brain scan done on people who who recently had sugar in their system and it showed the it had the same effects as someone who had cocaine in their system so that it triggers the same the same uh you know brain activity and the same high basically so it's tough for people to make that change if it has that strong of a of a uh, you know, effect on them. Okay, so we got a question from from uh, Neva. I think I'm saying your name right, Neva. If I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. But at our health fair, no, that's right. Okay. Um, did you want to go ahead and ask the question? Um, no, go ahead. I'll let you. Okay. It says at our health fair we. We had only uh, water to hand out, but we gave um, icy popsicles to the children. What do you think about that? Uh, well, the water is great. You know, that's a good thing to, to give the children. Uh, uh, the icy popsicles, like I said, you know, in moderation, having these things is fine. You know, um, there are healthy uh, alternatives. I don't, know, I don't know what kind of icy popsicles they they are. There were, um, there are sugar-free icy popsicles. Uh, but like I said, in moderation, uh, I'm, it's not going to have a too bad of an impact on them, unless the children are having those every single day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I don't think they were sugar-free, but that's a good idea. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, basically everything in moderation. You know, Having too much water is unhealthy for us, too. <laughs> right. Okay, so we got a question from uh, Great Plains Tribal Chairman Staff. What is the most unhealthy beverage in the U.S.? most unhealthy beverage that's a good question uh off the top of my head i you know soda soda has basically no positive uh, uh nutrient rich <laughs> you know it's basically not good for us at all it's just all sugar and and you know obviously you have alcohol which you know could be also with the number of deaths that it causes every year. So uh, it's a tough, uh, tough question to have, you know, have a definite answer for, but you, you think about alcohol, sugar, um, sugar is also filled in alcohol too, but uh, like I said, deaths and the effects of um, 
of uh, diabetes and obesity has on on uh, Americans and uh, people all over the world, basically. So, you know, it, uh, it, that's a good question for Google too. <laughs> I agree, though. I think definitely um, soda pop would probably be on the top yeah. top three. <laughs> but uh, I got a question from Renee. Um, when making the actual fruit drinks, um, like the ones in the slideshow that you had earlier, would you recommend using honey to sweeten sweeten it somewhat? Yeah, honey is fine. Honey's uh, like I said, there's a, a healthy alternative for sugar. Uh, um, honey was used in a lot of our traditional diets, and it could still be used as a replacement for sugar. Uh, you know, like I said, honey's great. Okay, so I got a question. Um, do you know of any policies set in place geared towards healthy beverages that you know of? That I know of, um, not for healthy beverages. Um, it's kind of a new new deal, and um, I would like to see it done more, but uh, I'm sure there's policies out there, but I haven't heard of any that have been implemented yet. Warren, what is... Um, your favorite healthy beverage? Um, see, I drink water every all day long. Basically, I have a water bottle here. I fill up twice a day. It's forty ounces. I drink it all, every all throughout work, and uh, it's basically what I have. Um, so that's, I guess, you know, it should be everyone's favorite healthy beverage. I think. I think that's a question. I, that's, that sounds a lot like Devereaux's question. <laughs> Um, so we got a question from Brad Hawk. Um, is there any tribal communities looking to follow the lead from Navajo Nation in creating their own junk food tax? They're using the taxes to make uh, water systems and food irrigation projects better. Uh, we had a few. Actually, Eugene, I think you know a little bit more about this than I do, but was it MHA that wanted to do the junk food tax? There were several, several tribes that... Um, that we're looking into implementing it. It's just that wasn't through, what, through transitions of uh, employees um, coming off and coming on. It just never went through. So yeah, yeah. There are several communities who who like he, like he said they wanted to, but it just never was done yet. But the, the interest is out there, and I think it should be uh, more more communities should follow Navajo Navajo's lead. Uh, it's uh, a good way to not only improve health, but like, like, they, like they did, they, to improve the, the systems within their communities, different systems. So, um, Sisseton Wapitin Oyate does have a healthy beverage policy. Um, okay. I'm sure they'll be happy to share. Uh, Sarah Lincoln would be the one to contact for that. Okay, I'll get more inform information on that from there. I'll have a site visit with her next week. So, Awesome. So we'll leave this uh, open up to any more questions for anyone. Also, um, I did put the, the feedback form. So if everyone that is logged in would uh, please fill the, the feedback form, it is on the chat. If not, we'll be sending out emails here shortly. And if you can feed that, send that or fill out the feedback form and um, we'll get that going. Also, we'll be sharing the slideshow from uh, Warren's presentation. And then another thing is that we'll also, I'll talk to Warren more about sharing the, the um, evaluation forms that were shared within the um, presentation so we can get those out to anyone who would like a reference of that. Well, uh, if there's any, any more questions, I'd like to thank everyone for for um, logging in, for listening, for I hope uh, learning something. Um, I think a lot of the questions were really really awesome. Uh, like I said, thank you. Uh, there's not anything else. Thank you, Warren, for your presentation. Um, also, keep in mind, everyone, that there is there um, is for for August's presentation. I'm not sure what the dates are, but we'll be sending out um, 
the dates for that for August presentation. I think we might have um, another question. Amy, um, I've heard that people use, use people usually confuse uh, thirst with hunger, mm -hmm. leading them to eat more when they're actually thirsty. Did you read anything about recommendations to drink water prior to eating to help reduce the amount of food consumed? Yeah. Well, I, basically, you know, having, having a cup of water before your meal is, is kind of uh, recommended. Uh, like, like you said, a lot of people, when they think they're hungry, they're actually just thirsty. So kind of quench your thirst before you drink so you don't overeat is a, a thing to keep in mind before at, at every meal. Also, another thing too is um, we here at Great Plains, we did have some of the um, infused waters. So something that people can start using to put a little bit of flavor. If you think water is boring, it's something that we can uh, share so that people can have something to drink that's a little bit more healthier. Okay, so if uh, anyone doesn't have any questions, um, again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today in today's webinar. Uh, and also, we'll be, be sure to fill out the feedback form, like I mentioned, and we'll be sending out the dates for the next webinar and for next month. So, also, we'll be sending the, the copy of this webinar. So, if anyone has know anyone that missed it and you would find this um, this webinar uh, interest of interest for them, you can send it to them as well. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, have a good day. See you Eugene. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.